Yo, what to do everybody? I'm Arctic. Hope you're having a good day. Today I'm going to be sharing a bunch of information with you about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. In this video we have information about crossplay, dedicated servers, DLC, cosmetics, each of the family members and victims gameplay style, and just a whole lot more general gameplay information. So if you're new around here or just joined the TCSM community, or even if you've been with the community for a while, stick around and watch till the end if you want to get loads of knowledge before we get gameplay from the technical test that's coming next week. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss anything on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Let's get it. All right, I'm about to go over everything quick and clean, and I'll explain some stuff in further detail if necessary. Also, if you have any questions at all after watching the video, leave it down below, and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. One last thing, every bit of secret information I have here can be subject to change as the game is still in active development. Also, all this info is straight from Gun Interactive themselves, from all their social medias over at Discord, Reddit, and Twitter. So be sure to follow them if you want, but now let's begin. Starting off first with the family side of things. The Cook. The Cook starts the match with three padlocks. He can place these padlocks on doors, gate exits, crawl spaces, the fuse box, and probably many more other things as well. The Cook can also remove these locks if the player wants to, and it'll get added back into his inventory so he can place them elsewhere if needed. However, if a victim unlocks one of the Cook's padlocks, that padlock is gone forever. Now here is where it gets fun. You can double lock doors. Most or all doors can be locked normally already without any of the cook's padlocks. You heard me right, the family can lock doors and then the cook can double lock a door with one of his padlocks. So that means you will need two pick locking tools as a victim to unlock a double locked door. More info on the victim side of locked doors later. But speaking of doors and locks, I believe there are three types of locks in the game. There are the cook's padlocks, the normal locks on the doors, and there are latches. So latches I believe are only on these type of doors here, so like the flimsy basement doors, and these latches can be locked and unlocked from anyone, even the victims. You don't need some sort of unlocking tool for this door. But again, you'll need an unlocking tool for the normal doors and for the cook's padlocks. All right, it's enough about doors for now, but one last piece of info for the cook. You know his hearing ability and how it highlights the victim? Well, the highlighted victim will only appear for the cook and not the whole family unless something happens specifically according to Andy. We don't know what exactly yet though for the victim to be highlighted for everyone. All right, moving away from the cook and on to Leatherface. Leatherface has a one hit kill mechanic according to IGN, but to do this one hit kill, you will need to have some sort of, of what I call the perfect rev to get this insta kill. If you rev too long, you'll stall out, and if you don't rev the chainsaw at all, you'll just swing the chainsaw doing a bit of damage. So always aim for that perfect rev for an insta kill apparently. Other nice pieces of information on Leatherface is that he is the only family member who cannot use a ladder. This may go for the cook as well, but I'm not too sure, but everyone else can use the ladder. So if you're getting chased by Leatherface, find a ladder, but be careful because there could be another family member waiting for you on the other side. Leatherface will also have voice lines in the game as well as his other iconic looks such as his iconic pretty woman mask skin. One last thing about Leatherface is that close encounters do not work on Leatherface, but sneak attack do work on Leatherface. More on close encounters and sneak attacks later. Moving on to the Hitchhiker. The Hitchhiker starts with three traps. He can place these traps just about anywhere, including in front of the generators, the fuse boxes, and in front of escape exits. Another thing about these traps is that he can reset the traps even after a victim steps in one. On the other hand, victims can disable the traps by using a bone shard, I believe. But even if a victim disables a trap, the Hitchhiker can still reset it, essentially making these traps have an infinite amount of use. But not only that, the Hitchhiker can pick up the traps and place them elsewhere. Moving on to the last OG family member, the best killer there ever was, Old Man Jenkins' Grandpa. First of all, Grandpa is a legit NPC, a non-playable character, but he helps out the family a lot. The three players that are playing as the killers have to feed Grandpa blood in order to use and maximize his Grandpa's abilities. What are some of Grandpa's abilities you may be wondering? Well, I know one of them, he has a built-in live functional UAV system inside him, meaning he'll locate and highlight all victims on a map, revealing their location but only for about like 3 seconds. So basically grandpa has wall hacks if fed blood, also the more you feed grandpa blood, his wall hacks ability increases the more you feed him. Now a tip for the killers, leveling up grandpa with blood is a game changer, so just do that as fast as possible. Now some of you may be thinking, man grandpa is broken and OP, well you may be right, we don't know for sure yet, however, you cannot kill grandpa 
but you can disable grandpa by stabbing him with a bone shard and this will temporarily time him out, disabling him and his ability. Don't know how long he'll be on the bench for, but maybe for around a couple of minutes, so make sure to go visit old grandpa visits if you know what I'm saying. With that being said, none of the family members can be killed, the close you can get by killing is just disabling g -Paw. Some more info on grandpa is that he'll spawn randomly and on different parts of the map each time, so he is not in the same spot each game. Alright now moving on to the family as a whole and their general gameplay, Leatherface always spawns in the basement with the victims, the rest of the family spawns on the map randomly like inside the house or maybe outside of the house, and as soon as the match starts for the killers, you have to close all the exits so the victims don't escape, because I believe all the exits are wide open at the start of the match. So if you're a killer and you go straight down to the basement where the victims spawn, they can probably easily get around you and break your ankles with their perks and abilities, and then the exits will be wide open for them because you just went straight to the basement. So again as a killer you gotta start by closing up all them exits. And we have more information on all the different types of exits later. So back to some general family gameplay, there's two ways to gather blood for grandpa, one way is from striking and executing executing victims, another way is from collecting blood from blood buckets that are scattered around the map. Another thing about these blood buckets is that they start out full already, meaning you can just go up to these buckets and collect blood already, and after you retrieve blood from them, they will refill over time. That's right, infinite blood baby for good old grandpa. As you can see here is an example of a blood bucket, there's a sack with the previous victim's parts in a sack, and it's dripping blood into a bowl. Pretty gnarly stuff. Another piece of general gameplay information for the family side is every time they swing their weapons, it consumes some of their stamina bar, and if a family member swings when their stamina bar is empty, they will enter some sort of burnout phase. Where I think they cannot attack or run until their stamina bar refills back up. One last thing about the family is that each family member has alternate executions that they can equip before a match starts. And not only that, but there will be a skill tree with different abilities so you can have specific builds for any family members. So you can customize your grandpa and give him a different ability that isn't the wall hack move and stuff like that. Alright enough about the family, now time for the victims and their side of the gameplay style. So same goes for the victims, they also have a perk tree so you can customize their perks and have different builds and stuff like that. Don't think you can change the unique abilities though, just the perks. Speaking of the victim's unique abilities, I believe you can use them as much as you want, but they do have a cooldown time every time you use it, so use them wisely. Next up, there are three items that victims can pick up to help them escape. These three items are bone scrap, health items, and unlock tools. These three items can be found on the floor or inside boxes throughout the map, and as you're scavenging for these items, like let's say from a toolbox, you will have to do a little mini game that will make you look through the box quickly and quietly. Also keep in mind some victims can search through these boxes quicker and more quietly than others. Now let's go through a brief description of each item. The health item is for healing yourself and or your teammates. The unlock tool is what you need to unlock doors, the cook's padlocks, fuse boxes, and probably lots of other stuff as well. And remember how the cook can double lock a door? Well again, you will need two unlock tools if you want to unlock the padlock and the locked door. And also each unlock tool will disappear after one use of the tool. So that's why you will need two tools to unlock a double locked door. The last item is the bone scrap which is used for multiple different situations. And keep in mind after a single use of a bone scrap, it'll disappear so make sure you use them wisely. But some uses of the bone shard can be used to cut down the dangling bones, disabling the hitchhiker's traps, disabling grandpa, saving fellow teammates by doing a sneak attack and using a bone shard for a close encounter. Now there are more than these three items you can pick up but they are objective items like the fuse for the fuse box or the valve handle for the valve escape. Another thing about the victims is that they can only carry two items in their inventory and there is not a perk that can make them carry an extra item. So you have to pick and choose what item you need for the situation you're in. You'll probably want to carry a bone scrap at all times because that is used for sneak attacks and close encounters. Now allow me to explain what exactly are sneak attacks and these close encounters. To do either of these, you will need a bone shard. Now, a sneak attack is the simpler of the two. It's when a teammate is in a tussle with another family member, so, and so another teammate can save the teammate that's in the grapple by doing a sneak attack, which just stabs the killer and then stuns them for a short time. I believe you can also perform a sneak attack if you just sneak on them quietly. So yeah, I don't think you can only do a sneak attack to save a teammate. You can also do it just randomly if they're not paying attention. Now, for close encounters. Think of close encounters as a pocket knife from Friday the 13th the game. It's similar, but also very different. So for a close encounter to initiate, you will of course need to have a bone shard, 
and I think the killer has to grab you or maybe just be in front of you or something like that and that's pretty much it. A close encounter will activate. So what this means exactly is that you will go into a struggle with the killer and you will both enter a little mini game. Now here's the interesting part. Either of you can win this mini game so it's not guaranteed the bone shard will save the victim but I think the mini game is favored a little bit more towards the victim side. It's probably about like a 60% for the victim to win and a 40% chance for the killer to win. So if the victim wins then you will stun the killer for a short time and if the killer wins then you will probably be dead meat. So close encounters can act like a second chance for the victim but you will have to work for it. So yeah there you go. Another thing I should mention is that close encounters do not work on Leatherface so beware of the boy. However sneak attacks do work on Leatherface so you can just go up behind Leatherface stab him then run away. Also another thing about these close encounters is that a teammate can save you while you're in a close encounter minigame. That's where the sneak attack comes in from your teammate, but again, you both need to have a bone shard. Now another question is, will the victim that uses his bone shard to activate the close encounter lose that bone shard if another teammate frees him by using his sneak attack? Well, it's not confirmed yet, but I'm a guess, yes, that victim in the close encounter will probably lose their bone shard even though he didn't complete the minigame. Because if you think about it, if he doesn't lose that bone shard, that's like an infinite use of the bone shard to stall your death and someone else can keep saving you. You know what I mean? If you get my drift, then you get my drift. If you don't, well, I might explain it in the comments later. But continuing on about victims' gameplay, all victims will spawn in the basement tied up. Some victims may spawn together and some separately and you have to break free by doing a mini game. And you have to keep quiet while doing the mini game or Leatherface will know where you're at because I don't think they know exactly where your location is. So keep quiet when you're breaking free. Oh yeah, and by the way, Leatherface spawns in the basement as well. So good luck with that. Another thing about spawning in the basement is that all doors are locked that leads to the upstairs. So, so as soon as you free yourself, start looting them boxes for unlock tools and bone shards. Some more victim gameplay details is that the basement is huge. It's like a mine shaft down there, so you have enough time to escape, don't worry. And also victims will get a proximity warning every time when a killer family member is nearby. The closer the killer gets, the more the proximity warning will intensify to let you know, hey, it's time to hide, sucker. That's everything I want to go over for the victims, so now let's talk all the escape exits. There are more exits than family members, keep that in mind. In fact, there are four exits on each map. There's a valve exit where you have to find a valve handle, then locate the pressure valve pipe, and that's where you'll use the valve handle to repair and do a mini game. Then one exit will open and you're free to go. But also, I think there is a time limit on this valve exit, so you have to hurry or it'll close back up by a time limit or from the killers turning it off. Another exit is a fuse exit. You'll need to find the fuse, then locate the fuse box, then unlock that fuse box with an unlock tool because it will be locked. Then you do the mini game and then the exit will open and you're free to go but again you gotta hurry. The last two exits are two cattle grid exits which are fences that are electrified. So to escape from these cattle grid exits you will need to turn off the power that electrifies the exits. One is powered by a car battery, the other is powered by a generator. But keep in mind, after you turn the power off, the killers can just turn them back on. Alright, I hope you guys are learning lots of info from the family side and the victim sides. But now for some random bullet points that are things you want to know about the game that contains information about DLC, cosmetics, crossplay, and other cool gameplay stuff about the game. So the family house map will take place during sunrise, gas station map will take place during the night, and the slaughterhouse map is during the daytime. The game will have a tutorial mode covering aspects of the game such as how to play as the killers and the victims. The average match takes about 15 minutes to complete, but don't worry if you die early you can leave the game and keep all your progress that you earned in that match. Family and victims will have separate matchmaking queues, so if you want to play as a victim, you select play as a victim queue and same goes for the killer, if that makes sense. This also means if you're in a party with the group, you all either have to choose a victim's queue or the family queue matchmaking. You cannot split your group and do some killers and some victims unless you do a private lobby which brings me to my next bullet point. There will be private lobbies so have fun testing out builds and being sweaty with it. Next the game will have team based voice chat meaning you can only talk to and hear your own teammates and not the other side. Next when selecting characters a match cannot start without Leatherface so every match will have a Leatherface also when selecting characters, there cannot be duplicates. You all have to select different characters or the match won't start. Because of this, there will be people who will leave if they don't get their character they want. But don't worry, if someone leaves, the game will not start and it'll wait until someone else joins. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering about crossplay. 
Well, crossplay is not confirmed as of right now, but the team over at Gun Interactive is aiming for crossplay at launch. If it doesn't come at launch, then hopefully down the line. The game will be on Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, PS4, PS5, and PC. The game will not be available on the Switch. The game is being built on Unreal Engine 4. The game will not have single player content when it launches. Their main focus right now is on the asymmetrical horror multiplayer experience, but maybe down the line there might be single player stuff. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre will have dedicated servers on launch, so if someone leaves the game, the game won't end. And lastly, let's talk about future DLC. First of all, the game will have cosmetic customization. The game will not have any exclusive skins, so no pre-order skins, no exclusive Savini skins, no exclusive nothing. Any type of DLC or cosmetics will be available to every player. Now, as for like crossover DLC characters like different killers like Jason or Michael Myers, they said no to that stuff. This game is strictly based on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Another thing about their future DLC, they said that they will take a more serious approach for the DLC, meaning all cosmetics will match the tone of the 1974 film and the time period as well. So some people think that means we'll get bathing suit DLC packs and like Halloween DLC packs because they had that stuff back then as well. Well as much as I want that stuff as well, Gun Interactive said that they're doing a more serious approach for the cosmetics. So imagine the lore of the game really quick. You know how Anna is asking her friends to go help her find her missing sister? It didn't go down like, hey Julie and Leland, do you want to help me find my missing sister? And they didn't reply with, Oh heck yeah, let me go grab my bathing suit really quick and sell my Halloween costume so I can go help find your sister and get chased by some crazy people. You know what I'm saying? So as much as we all want that stuff, it's ultimately up to them. But hey, time will tell. Alright people, that's loads of information for you guys. Hopefully I didn't talk too quick. If I did, then just go back and re-watch the video, I guess. <laughs> but hope you enjoyed this coverage of the game so far. Again, all this info is all from their social medias. And the game is still in active development, so some of this stuff can change. Comment any questions you have about the game down below, and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button for more Texture Chainsaw Massacre. And ring the bell icon to be notified every time we upload a brand new video. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. So